Okay, we're up to the seventh commandment, a juicy one for preachers. Exodus 20, verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Deuteronomy 5, 18. Exodus, they're in the, they're in the wilderness. Deuteronomy, they're preparing for, to go into the land. Deuteronomy 5, 18. Neither shalt thou commit adultery. And in Romans, the church age, 13. Romans 13, verse 19. Romans 13, 19. The Bible says, uh, 13, 9, not 19, 13, 9. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Okay, so here we find the Israelites in the wilderness. The law is given orally, the Ten Commandments. We see Israel preparing to go into land under Joshua. And we see Paul writing to the Romans, to the Gentiles. Plain and simple. Back to Leviticus 20, verse 10. And it's simple. It's a simple commandment. Leviticus 20, verse 10. And a man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, there you go. There's a wife married, and another man has sexual relations with her. Even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress, that's the first time the adultery and adulteress shows up, shall surely be put to death. Whoa. And believe it or not, in America, adultery was once a crime, punishable by judges and law. Man, if we had to pull that up today to capital punishment, we would eliminate many of the actors and actresses as they commit adultery before the eyes of their audience, television or movies. Because we're going to see a, a big statement in Matthew chapter 5 coming up a little bit later. But in the law set forth to the nation of Israel, it was a capital penalty for the adulterer and the adulteress. That and murder. And murder and adultery, the, the sins of David, are the, are the two main things that, you know, it's preached on a pulpit against which it should be. But we also need to realize that there were other offenses in the law that capital punishment was to be applied. False preachers, false witnesses, false prophets were to be killed. Children who did not obey their parents and would not listen to their parents we read, were to be put to death. Those that murder somebody else would be put to death. Many cases. Job 24, 15. And there's not really much needs to be said because in the Bible, it's plain and simple. Now, in the, wor in the world, it's not. Job 24. In the world, it's called shacking up, a fair, a fling, a rendezvous, and other nice little juicy adjectives and verbs to eliminate the harsh word of adultery. And remember, in the, in the United States court system, it is illegal to put the Ten Commandments. And one of them Ten Commandments is, Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not kill. Crimes that were once brought before judges in America, now it's laughed at. And Job chapter 24, verse 15, The eye also of the adulterer waiteth for twilight. Say, no eye shall see me, and disguises his face. There was a time that an adulterer would go at night when no one would see him. He would dress up in a costume, 
dress up so nobody would recognize he would be in hiding for his sin and that is true the old america now today adultery is just fronted right out in the open a wife can go to a bar and see her husband with another woman and he's like oh yeah it's been on for a while you're gonna divorce me oh well i'll marry her Adultery is played out on the theater, the Broadway, and television. It's no longer something that people uh, hide from. It's out in the open. There is no embarrassment. There is no blushing for the sin of adultery. Where Job BC 1520, you know, you were to hide. It was not made out and you know known. It was not out in the open. Proverbs 623. Proverbs 623. There are people who brag about it. 632, excuse me, 632. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman. Lack is understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. Again, we just read in the law for the Jew, the Proverbs is written to the Jews under the law. You have no understanding. Now here's a man that married a thousand wives. I mean, oh. That's illegal in America, for now America, uh, polygamy. And he says, do it to destroy his own soul. Yeah, when it was found out under the law and tried by the, by the people of Israel and it be found true, the adulterer and the adulteress were to be killed. There would be no loophole in the law. There would be no uh, imprisonment. There would be no mercy of the court. Now, God showed David mercy. And it would be a picture of the Christian who sins against God, whatever the sin be. All sins are sins. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, including adultery. There would be a loss of not of our life, but it would be a loss of rewards. A loss of inheritance. And from some of the pulpits, you would think that you would actually, you know, you have eternal salvation, except if you killed somebody, except you had adultery. Well, that's not so for the church. It, it, it's a, it's a sin. Let me not ease the sin of adultery to make it sound like, oh, we can do it because we shouldn't do it. But under grace on this side of Calvary, it can be forgiven. Under the, un under the Old Testament law, no. Proverbs 30, verse 20. 30, verse 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. Man, she has many husbands. She eateth. Okay, all women eat, and wipeth her mouth and saith, I've done no wickedness. There's no pardon for this woman. She sleeps with other men besides her husband. She's committed adultery, and she just wipes herself like, okay, I'm done next. What's the next man's course? And even she were to seek out God's forgiveness, there is no pardon because a pardon means I'm guilty, Lord. I have sinned against you. David told God, Lord, I have sinned against you and you only and with a contrite heart. David announced his guilt. He didn't try to hide it. This woman, she didn't even try to hide it. Just, it's like having meat and potatoes for her. It's a shame because that verse right there speaks out to Americans. Oh, I'm sleeping with another one. Wait till Monday, I, wait till Monday when I go to work and I get to brag about it to all my co-workers. 
Or, you know, you said, oh, I've got eight, I, I got eight uh, divorced wives or ex-wives working on number nine, working on number 10. This meat and potatoes and it's a sin is vile before God the Father. But we'll keep going. Jeremiah 3.8. Jeremiah 3.8. Jeremiah 3, and I'm not trying to make adultery lower, but, you know, all sin is sin. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. We know not to commit adultery. When we do it, we sin. We know we should not lie. And when we lie, we sin. We know we should not steal. But when we steal, we sin. Jeremiah 3, verse 8. But I saw when... When for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Now uh, there's a problem with, with some with some preachers there. I am not an advocate for adultery. I am not an advocate for divorce. God said the nation of Israel committed adultery against me, and I divorced them. And there's a whole book, a uh, whole, uh, oh shoot, what's that? The prophet in the Bible that God told him to go marry a, a, a whore. It was a picture of Israel. And I'm going to say Hosea. I don't think that is. Yeah, Hosea. Okay. Divorce and adultery are a sin. But in this day and age, one party can seek a divorce and the other one has no bearing when a judge says, yeah, divorce granted. Again, and the divorce is, you know, some Baptist preachers, okay, your life is in, that's it, go on. Not always the case. But here is a case, and we'll probably see it later, there is an adultery and there is a divorcement. And Jesus said, except for fornication, it's almost, almost taken for granted a fine line that God says once a person has stepped out of their relationship with their husband or wife for another male or female, that ends the marriage. And what I just said right now is going to be foul to many preachers. And how dare you say that? But that's what God says to Jeremiah, the Holy Spirit inspiration. And that's what Jesus says in the Gospels. That woman at the well, you know, go get that husband. Oh, I don't have a husband. No, you got you no know, four and with the fifth one. He's not your husband. In America, you need a license to get married, but there are many preachers and Christians out there who have not had but one marriage certificate, and they're adulterers and fornicators because they've had sexual relations before a marriage certificate. Now, they may have only one legal document for a marriage, but the skeletons in the closet Adultery and fornication go together. Having premarital sex with anyone who's not your, your spouse is also a sin. I mean, what preachers in the pulpits may be guilty of that? And if you haven't, good for you, glad for you. But what of the sins are in your closet? Huh? Pride, that's a sin. Pride's a sin. Pride is one of them big serious sins. Again, I'm not trying to level off sin. Verse 9. And it came to pass through the likeness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. You can commit adultery not with another human being, but you can commit adultery with idolatry and imagery. They got a thing right now, I just read, I think it was last year. There are people out there who are 
having sexual relations with Mother Earth. I know you want to. That's all I'm going to say. Well, you're definitely having relations with stones and stocks. That would be like trees. And I guarantee that's happening somewhere. Back when I was in Connecticut, a man was arrested, arrested for having relations with a bush. There's nothing new in the Bible. All that sin comes short of the glory of God. So, okay, uh, I have never had sexual relations with another woman. Or if you're a man, I've never had sexual relations with another man. Do you have idolatry? We've already talked about idolatry. Do you have imagery? Are you worshiping an idol or an image? You're involved in adultery. Adultery does not have to be a man or woman. It can be a stock or it can be a rock or it can be a material thing. Do you see the whoredom? We, uh, I've done a study. Look for it under whoredom. You can sell yourself out for relations and it doesn't have to be sexual relations and god calls it order adultery or fornication and it involves the imagery and it involves the idolatry all right fine you, you know you know uh, i don't commit adultery of the man or woman but there are christians who committed adultery fornication whoredoms with idolatry and with imagery you're just as guilty and you may have been faithful to your wife for all the years you've been married. How about that? I know I know preachers who, you know, they preach against adultery and they allow their congregation to worship them. That's adultery. That's fornication. Chapter 5, verse 7. Oh, we stretch out the sins as broad as they are. Lying goes a long way. Adultery fornication goes a long way. How shall I pardon? Remember, pardon has to be, I am guilty, God. How shall I pardon for thee? Thy children have forsaken me. And have sworn by them that are no gods. When I had fed them to the full, then committed adultery, and assembled themselves by troops in harlots' houses. Oh. Boy, don't we see those stories in the Bible, in the Gospels. God has taken care of a group of people, and they commit adultery against him, and they're involved with whoredoms. Again, I've done a video on, on whoredoms. Look it up on YouTube and SoundCloud. You'll be amazed about the whoredoms, not just having sexual relations, but idolatry and imagery. Sexual Relations outside of marriage is a sin. Idolatry and imagery is also a sin that links in the same word together. You know why you have sex outside of marriage? Because you idolize somebody else more than your spouse. You know why you get yourself involved in fornication? Because the imagery of that person has caught your eye, the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh. Imagery and idolatry and we'll see that coming up pretty soon uh chapter 7 verse 9 we're going beyond just sexual relations now you're bound to a white ball says seek not to be loose and that's the one seven nine will you steal that's a thou shalt not steal murder thou shalt not kill commit adultery thou shalt not commit adultery shall False wit, false, uh, swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal. That's not God. And walk after other gods whom ye not know. No, not. If you're worshiping another God that's not God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jesus Christ, or you have another Jesus, Paul says there's another Jesus. If you're involved in those worship of those gods and deities, you are committing adultery and fornication and whoredom. And you may have been faithful for your wife for a hundred years. She may have been your only marriage bed partner. And yet, if you go to a religion, you go to another God, you go to somebody who is not God in Jesus Christ, the biblical Jesus, you are an adulterer. You get involved in imagery, 
Maybe looking at other people's pictures, pornography, looking at your, your own pictures, how great I am, look how wonderful I am, look how look how great this person, oh, this preacher is the best preacher of all preachers, oh, this guy's the best, this guy's the best singer, oh, this guy's a such great hymnal, this guy has is such a great Paul said to Christians, I you know, some of Paul, some of Paulus, that's all sin, that's all idolatry. And you may be faithful to your spouse and still be an adulterer. Now, if you stepped out on your spouse, you have joined flesh with flesh with another person besides your spouse, you commit adultery. If thou shalt confess, if thou shalt confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. If you're not saved and you've committed adultery and fornication and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with your heart, you've been washed in the blood, that's all washed, that's all clean, you don't need to bring that up no more. But the other aspect of adultery, how are you doing with idols in imagery? Again, see whoredom. Look up my, my lesson on whoredom. Chapter 23, verse 14, Jeremiah. Chapter 23, verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of the evildoers, that none doeth return from it. Okay, so the nation of Israel is God's people, will always be God's people. The capital of God's people, the, the, the capital of the land is Jerusalem. And where the temple is, where God says, I will meet with that Jew, there is adultery going on. Let's bring it up to the church here. We are we are the church of Jesus Christ. It's not body. It's not a building. It's not stones. It's not nails. It's not screws. It's not wood. But within the body of Jesus Christ, there are people out there committing adultery against God through God's falling God's idolatry and imagery and there are within the body of Christ there are men and women who have stepped outside the vows of their marriage and gone and joined themselves to another which all of that is sin now under the law in, in Judah they were to be capital punished men <laughs> I don't know if you can say it like that in the in the church of Jesus Christ we are to confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. And we will lose crowns and we will lose rewards and the right of an inheritance by those sins. But we don't lose ourselves. We don't lose our soul. A Christian will not go to hell. But man, there's much to lose wood, hay, or stubble. 29, 23. 29.23 Because they have committed villainy in Israel, God's people, and have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives. There's the definition. We've done that, God's name, we've already done that study. Look up on YouTube and SoundCloud, but have you gone as a man to another man's wife that's adultery. Wife, have you gone to another man that is not your husband? That's adultery. Christian, have you stepped outside of God the Father, Jehovah, Jesus Christ the Savior, who suffered and died on Calvary's cross according to the scriptures, and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures? Have you stepped out? You committed adultery. If it's how great I am, you committed adultery. If it's my little, oh, this is going to make me money, this is going to take care of my future, you committed adultery. Oh, that guy is so great, that woman is so great, you committed adultery. I got all his albums, I got all his pictures, all his posters hanging on my wall, you committed adultery. Imagery idolatry and having sex with the wrong person isn't it interesting 
Ezekiel 16.23. Ezekiel 16.23. Some of you listen to this and like, wow, I've never heard that before. I always just thought adultery was this. Yeah. Why are we getting one-sided of sins? When sin is so broad, and again, I am not leveling out adultery. It is a vile, wicked sin against your spouse, against others, against the church. How many people know, oh, this church here, the piano player ran off with the... <laughs> Somebody. The pastor ran off with the piano player. This is vile. It's wicked. 1623. And it came to pass after all the wickedness. Am I in the right place? 1623. Woe, woe unto thee, saith the Lord. Verse 22. And in all thy abominations, thy whoredoms, there's that word again, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth. I don't see it there. But just look at the words in that one. Apologize for that. 2317. Sometimes I make mistakes. I'm not perfect. 2317. The Babylonians came to her in a bed of love, and they defiled her with their whoredoms. And she was polluted with them, and her mind was alienated from them. Does that not recognize adultery? And the word whoredoms, I guess that's what we just read in 1623. And it's not a literal Israel's jumping in Babylon's bed or Babylon's jumping in Israel's bed. It's what Israel has done with Babylon, taking her God, taking her worship, getting away from God Jehovah, getting away from the law of God, doing what the Babylonians were doing as far as worship service. And that's what the church is today doing. They're taking on the world and they're committing adultery against God by sleeping with the devil. And doing the devilish and wicked and worldly things, that's adultery, church. When your service occupies by the means of the world and not of the Bible, you're committing adultery. That's what Israel was doing with Babylon. And those Babylonian gods are still alive today, and they're a form of Esther, Easter. They're a form of Baal, Christmas. And you will see Babylonian worship and God worship in churches today as well in the realm of religions and the realm of the church of jesus christ are serving babylonian gods that's adultery and there's no sex involved stepping out on god jehovah jesus christ our lord god and savior for another God, for the devil or for the world, is just as bad as a husband or a wife stepping out on their spouse. It's wicked. And you will not get both this adultery preaching and teaching from the pulpits. I wonder why you don't get the idolatry and the imagery. Must be because somebody is involved in idolatry and imagery. But not everybody has gone away from their husband or wife. You, you didn't say that. I just did say that. Malachi 3.5. Malachi 3.5. You better believe I'm going to say what the Bible says. Malachi 3.5. And I will come near to you to judgment. Uh oh. I will be shift, swift witness against the sorcerers. Magic. Harry Potter. And against the adulterers, against the false swearers, judgment will come to saved or lost people who commit adultery, who have violated their marriage and have violated their relationship with God the Father. When you're involved with a church is idolatry imagery and it's promoted like the Catholic Church, you are in the church 
of, of idolatry and imagery, and it is adultery. Babylon, mystery, Babylon. There it is. Matthew 5.27 Matthew 5.27 Jesus He have heard that it was said by them of old time, which we just read, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Alright, that's what we've been studying. But Jesus said unto you, I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Well, I have never stepped out of my wife. Have you looked at pornography and got aroused? Have you seen a woman in a bikini? And woohoo! Have you, I can't whistle, at, at a co worker because she was looking mighty fine? Have you had ideas and thoughts of another woman fully dressed? And she's got your eye, the lust of the eye, and the pride, uh, I mean, the lust of the eye, and the lust of the flesh. Has she got you going? Have you had desires of her that you shouldn't have? You have committed adultery, as Jesus said. And guess what? You didn't have to jump in no bed, no hotel, no motel. You didn't have to get undressed. Maybe you did, too. I don't know. When you look after another woman and in your heart you flutter butter and you that's adultery. And there was no sexual physical contract contact. It was of your thoughts and of your heart. And the Bible says you commit adultery with her. If that woman dresses to impress men, that woman fixes herself so she can be seen of all the fleshly desires of men, she will be charged as an adulteress. And when you were in the law, the adulterer and the adulteress were to die in the Old Testament. The adulteress and the adulterer will be charged before God saved or lost, Christian woman. Jesus, how come I got wood, hay, and stubble and I got all this ash? Wasn't I a good Christian? Let's take a picture of what you look like, young lady. Yeah, you went to church and you wore af you wore outfits that turn men on. You are an adulteress because you turned them on. Look how look how Jesus said with her, both the adulterer and the adulteress, as the law prescribes, Jesus says you're both guilty. Christian, lady, when you step out of that house saved. And when you step out of that house, whether you're not married or you're, or you're married, you bend down in front of the mirror, and if anything's showing, you need to cover up. If we can see any butt cheeks, it needs to be covered up. And if your clothes are so thin and so revealing, you need to get dressed again. Jacob, when he brought his family, got right. They got rid of that idols that, that Rachel stole, and he got rid of the clothes. They changed their clothes. You may have realized just now that you're committing adultery with pornographic, going to the beach or wherever women hang out, I mean hang out, and you're attracted to it. You have committed adultery. How's the pastors doing now? How are the Christians doing now? That's one of the top sins for mankind. I mean, man, male. Looking and desiring is adultery, is a sin. It's imagery. You're looking at it. Hoo -hoo. See what I mean by adultery? You may even idolize that model with her picture. You might be attracted to her and only her through movies and through pornography and computers and pictures. That's idolatry. It's also adultery. Then Jesus, didn't God say you shall have no other gods before me? All right, you committed adultery. You have committed adultery, violation of that commandment, and you're in violation of thou shalt have no other gods before me. You put that woman's body before God. Clothed or naked. You have put that woman as another God. You violated two commandments. 
And then if your wife were to say, or your husband would say, have, have you cheated on me? Oh, no, no, no. Then you bear false witness. <laughs> but we'll get into that one later. Verse 32. But I say unto you, Jesus, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her is divorced, committeth adultery. Jesus gave the cause. All right? Your spouse has stepped out and stepped out to another person besides you. There it is. Legally through Jesus, and many men don't like this preaching, the marriage has come to an end. Now, you can wish and choose to forgive and forget and, and keep on living. That, glory to God, because I do not promote divorce. Or because your spouse stepped out and you can't trust them, you can't feel safe and secure with them. And Paul will go so far and say, Second, First Corinthians said, if the unbeliever steps out, let him go. What do you do with that cause for, for not promoting divorce? But if that lost man leaves, now I advise you not to remarry, but, 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 I'm not advocating divorce. Fifteen, nineteen. Matthew fifteen, nineteen. For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts. Ooh, ooh, look at that woman. Ooh. Murders. Adultery, fornication. If a man looks upon a woman to lust after her in his heart, it's not your head. It's your heart. We sin with the heart. Jeremiah says the heart is wicked and, and, and uh, who can know it? I can't believe it. I don't know why I committed adultery because it's in your heart. That's idolatry. That's being with the wrong uh, partner sexually. And that's also imagery. It's your heart to look at those pictures. It's your heart to think of those thoughts. It's your heart to step out on your marriage. And then you're going to turn around and say, I love you to your spouse that you cheated on. You don't love her. Your heart's not in it. It was never in it. It's a fling. It's adultery. It's sin. Now, what about Hollywood? They get up there and they're mooching and kissing on the screen. Oh, I love you. I love you. And they're married to somebody else. And they may not act sexually unclothed naked in the bed or they may do but if they thought about that actress being in the bed and performing the roles that they do in hollywood and movies and television that is adultery in the eyes of god jesus christ now under those sheets in front of the camera they may not be naked but man they, they got that desire to, to play the role and god says that's adultery hollywood Broadway, movies, and television are full of adultery. And they're not hiding themselves. They're not blushing themselves. They're doing it for all the world to see after you pay them. That's whoredom. We need more preachers to preach the truth, I tell you. 19.9. Uh, Matthew 19.9. And I say unto you, Jesus, whosoever putteth away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. What are you going to do? You can stay with your spouse. If you can stay with your spouse after that, 
Amen. Glory to God, man. You, you, it's a forgiving spirit. That's what Christ has done for us. You got the life of Christ. A, a, a vile sin has been committed against you. And I love you. You know, it's going to be hard to forget, but let's get together. Let, let's get things right. Let's make things right again. Glory to God. But are you going to keep on being married to someone who's going to keep on adulterating against you, adulterating against you, adulterating against you, and adulterating against you, and adulterating? When does it stop? And most likely, probably that person that's committed adultery, that's the one who's going to want to leave because he's had, he's had it with, with you. So you're going to chastise the Christian when Jesus says, "Set for fornicate," oh, you vow, you know, you're divorced, and I don't know. I know many Christians have been divorced, and they married someone in Christ, and God is blessing their lives and wonderfully blessing their life. While well, you got a sour pickle, you got a sour lemon peel, and you, oh, adultery is a major committed sin. You're not going to do this in this church. Look how great I am. People love me. Oh, how great I am. You know, how great I am it is. Uh, where are we now? 1918. He says unto him, which? Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So there is out of the mouth of Jesus, out of the mouth of Paul, out of the mouth of God, and out of the mouth of Moses. Adultery is wrong. Don't you dare say Stiley says you can do it. No, you can't. It's a sin. John 8, 3 and 4. John 8, 3 and 4. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him, Jesus, a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst of them, right in the middle of all the people, they said unto him, Master, this woman is taken in adultery in the very act. What did the law say? The adulterer and the adulteress. Where is the adulterer? They caught this woman in the very act of the marriage bed defilement. That means they were having sex. And they pulled that woman from having sex with that man and brought the woman. Said, so Jesus, she has committed adultery. We caught her in the very act, probably naked. And Jesus, like, uh, where's the man? Some think that the man could have been one of them. I don't know, but still, don't come to Jesus. Don't come to God with half the law. Don't come to God and Jesus say, well, you know, uh, uh, adultery is a defilement of, of, of the marriage bed. Absolutely, 100% true. But it's also a defilement of idolatry. It's also a defilement of imagery. You forgot those two. Teach it all as one. Romans 7.3. Romans 7 3. Romans 7 3. So then, if while her husband be liveth, your husband's alive, she be married to another man, she is called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no more, she is no adulteress. Though so she be married to another man. Okay, if a woman has a husband and she has another husband, she's an adulteress. If a woman has a husband who has died, okay, and she has another husband, she's not an adulteress, her husband has died. There's some people out there, well, you know. I'm a widower and I'm remarried. There's some people out there who say I'm an adulterer. I have two wives. Absolutely not. According to Paul, right to the Romans. 
Romans 7, okay, we just read that. From 1 Corinthians 6, 9. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, or right, his inheritance. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, or effeminate. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, you are sanctified, you are just in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of God. These sins ought to be not by the people of Christ. They are not to be named by Jesus Christ, the Christian. And if we do, we're what if we confess our sins. Now, I am not given no legal right to go sin and all oh, Jesus forgive me. No, you got to have that contrite spirit and that contrite heart like David had. Galatians 5.19. Galatians 5.19 Know ye not the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication. Look at verse 20, idolatry. 21, murders. That is the work of the flesh, the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. Hebrews 13, 4, and we'll close here. Hebrews 13, 4. Hebrews 13, 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. Whatever a husband and a wife does behind their bedroom, behind their, behind, behind their bedroom door, God says that's honorable. God likes that. That's a husband and wife. But whoremongers, get my video about whoremongers, and whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Are you a Christian? Have you committed whoredom? Have you committed adultery? You will be judged. Are you guilty? Are you seriously upset about that sin? If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Stop. Don't do it any longer. Get it right with God. First John 1 9. First John 1 9. See, so you were done. First John 1 9. Let's look at it. If we confess our sins, it's not adultery a sin. It's a wicked sin. It's a terrible sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How's that? Adultery is a sin. Before, uh, during the law and during the church age. Adultery has three forms of sex with it. It has the, the breaking out or the stepping out on your spouse. It has a form of idolatry. It has a form of imagery. I mean, if you step out in your spouse, you are looking at another body. You're looking at somebody who's not your spouse's body. You are wanting that body. You have the spirit of lust of the flesh and the lust of eyes. You can be sitting back and, and never... Uh, never stepped out of your marriage and looking at pornography in a book, looking at pornography in a magazine, looking at pornography on the computer, and you're looking at imagery, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. Oh, I can't have it, but I want it. And Jesus said, whosoever looking upon a woman, the lust after her in his heart has committed adultery. It's a major sin. It's a sin that we must come to God as sinners to get that pardon. It's a sin. 